And I think uh, to your point earlier about can the operators really you know, make something of this, you know, i.e. monetize it. And uh, one thing uh, just in August, again, that I think uh, was a keen interest uh, from my perspective is that he had Ericsson and Vodafone completing a live network trial at Coventry University uh, to show that, again, 5G standalone with network slicing capabilities can definitely raise you know, the mobile gaming experience for you know, anybody who's engaged. And as a little background, uh, we all understand that 5G standalone, as we emphasize, is critical for something like network slicing. And that is you know, being able to combine network resources in a dynamic fashion with quality of experience assurances, and again, built-in security and so forth. And uh, the key takeaway uh, from this trial is the fact that the trial participants indicated they were able to experience more consistent gaming connectivity with a 270% increase in throughput and a 25% decrease in latency, as well as 57% less jitter, as well as you know, just smoother graphics rendering and so forth. And so again, uh, this is a sea change from you know, 4G LTE capabilities or you know, the first iteration of 5G using non-standalone that combines 5G radios with 4G core capabilities. It's bringing on the 5G core capabilities going to achieve these breakthroughs that we already touched on. So, you know, this is somewhat encouraging, uh, the fact that Ericsson and Vodafone are you know, conducting a live network trial that's demonstrating that. And um, in fact, uh, Ericsson's network slicing report estimates that 25 to 30 percent of potential 5G use cases will require network slicing as an enabler. And you know, we saw T-Mobile CTO uh, just uh, the other week say, hey, you know, we're ready. We we're, we're, want to bring this to market for you know, the reasons we just touched on, lower latency, better performance, uh, better experience, and so forth. And you know, so with that, you know, what were your impressions of this particular trial? Is this a you know, really moving the ball forward, or is it kind of like we've been here before, yet another <laughs> trial? But you know, is it really ready for prime time? It sounds like a rhetorical question. Um, <laughs> yes, we've been here before, well. but also yes. I mean, it, like mm -hmm. none of this stuff, except for the actual numbers and the actual study. Uh, is all that surprising? Um, we, I mean, we we know about the lower latency. You know, we we know about the the you know increased number of packets. We we know all this, right? I mean, it's been the sales pitch for for five G um, for quite some time. Um, again, going back to my original point, it it just feels like the same story, just being repackaged for different use cases because they're not really they're not really taking off uh, at the scale and pace that, that we'd like them to with everything else. Um, I think, no, on, on the one hand, it's it's encouraging though. Um, I'm glad that they're still trying to tell these stories and finding new use cases and, and trying to drive up more business. What worries me is that um, we should be at a, at a point now where we don't, nobody has to do this, right? Vodafone shouldn't yeah. have to do this. T-Mobile shouldn't have to do this. We shouldn't have to, to have these case studies. It should be sort of, normal um, in our in our fluency of, of understanding how 5G works, we as consumers should be like, aha, yes, um, of course it works for this device and this device and this use of case. So normally, of course it'll work for gaming, it'll work for all these other things. The fact that we keep having to sell 5G um, in smaller and smaller and smaller verticals and, and market segments, um, it's a little bit concerning. It, it just means that the the marketing's not sticking, and maybe the operators need to. Um, it, it's not a question of of not continuing to repeat the same things over and over again, but maybe also adding a different tune. It's a, uh, it's a little bit like the uh, the Geico uh, insurance commercials, <laughs> okay. where you have you know you have different sets, you have different themes, you have like the the cavemen, and then you have like the other thing. Maybe they just need to find. Um, different themes uh, to, to sell consumers on. And also just kind of streamline adoption. Right now, again, the the complexity of it is you need different plans or you don't know if you need different plans or how, how you can get your 5G connection to your devices. And they just need to uh, eliminate those barriers of adoption and make it as simple as possible for, for um, technology users, regardless of what their devices are. 
Yes. Yeah, I can see TikTok videos on the horizon for yeah. <laughs> the suggestion here. And yeah, that, that, that that's actually not um, a non-serious suggestion. It's really about how do, do the operators become more imaginative about you know marketing uh, the 5G wares. And I know we've been hammering on, okay, 5G standalone is really you know, the critical difference maker. But most people out there, when you say 5G standalone, are going to kind of be like, well, how's that different from you know, 5G itself? And I think that's you know, where the, um, the operators kind of you know, shanked it, if you will. They came out with the, uh, the initial version of 5G, but really didn't say, oh, by the way, there is a sequel here. And actually, there's another sequel, 5G Advanced. And you know, this is something that obviously has to be delivered, has to be built in to make you know more of this magic happen in terms of the services and the uh, application capabilities. And so, you know, I wouldn't uh, be surprised if something uh, that was a new, diff uh, different take. Like uh, instead of like, I want my 5G, I want my network slicing. I don't know. Yeah. I want my slicing <laughs> to well, you, you know, you kind know, of resonate. Yeah, <laughs> you, you you have to approach your your market segments, your customers differently, right? And speak their, their language. So if you're targeting gamers, you're going to have to do something for gamers. If you're targeting the average mobile user, it's going to be different. Um, but ultimately- Let alone an enterprise yeah. or a business. <laughs> yes. And, <laughs> and I, I think there's there's also an opportunity there for for- operators to differentiate themselves um, in in more like in newer ways and it's I think it's it's fine if one operator that's invested in in uh, in, in certain 5g uh, uh, technologies to be the the operator for gamers right because they just have a better network for low latency low jitter sort of like, like you're not gonna have to you're gonna have the fastest connection for your games and it's gonna be really reliable. And for another operator to be known as the operator of choice for other types of use cases and other types of markets, um, as opposed to every operator trying to be the same thing to everyone. And, and I think they might have to start becoming a little bit more tactical as the device ecosystem gets broader uh, and, and more specific in the types of use cases that it targets. And, and gaming might be ahead of XR, because XR was still a few years away from that really scaling. But gaming, we're at a point where, yeah, it's it's starting to pick up significantly and and reach beyond serious gamers. Um, I think this this might be the the defining opportunity for the operators to start of to start redefining what's um, that that specific five G value proposition could be for them, um, and where you know maybe they have to abandon a market and focus on something else, where somebody else just sort of capitalize on it. Sort of like when uh, when AT and T was the original carrier for uh, for iPhones, you know, it's the same kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, great analogy. And yes, you know, I, I think uh, that's right on. There's, you know, you have to do the mass market advertising or outreach, but you can also augment that with targeted, you know, advertising. It's not an either or proposition. And I think, uh, but there's definitely room for improvement here, certainly when it comes to the mobile operators. And you now that's ongoing, but now it needs to be uh, refined to correlate with you know, the very technical advances that we touched on, you know, in our conversation here today. And uh, so, yeah, uh, with that uh, high note or potential high note, <laughs> you know, there was plenty of tonic here. Uh, thank you again, Olivier, uh, for you know, jumping on to the 5G factor, as always. Uh, thanks for having me, as always. Uh, not a problem. Not a problem. And again, uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, tuning in and listening to uh, the 5G factor. Always be sure to subscribe uh, to our, our webcast and to our beauty, viewing audience and listening audience. Thank you again for you know spending time with us and have a great 5G day, everyone.